Welcome back to One Take Triforcing. So in parts one through three, we talked about a couple different ways that you can protect components as well as keep your bot from being torn apart. So you have dual mounts for single mount uh, components to help preserve them a little bit better. And then you have split protection, which is you know just basically wrapped rods from end to end, um, which you can then combine with dual mounts to make them even more likely to stick around and keep your bot together. And then you have uh, combining those two things. So we have a gated uh, damage sink entrance to our dual mount here to prevent damage from flowing up this rod. It has to go out the other uh, sides of this strut. Uh, and then we have single point damage sinks gating the inside or the inputs to our dual mounts to help preserve this gun a little bit better if this is like a primary damage direction or something like that. So all of these things are great and they separately will help your bot and ideally you have all of these things independent of one another so you'd want all your attachment points to be separated out and away from one another so that you don't lose multiple uh, dual mount attachment points with one chunk of damage or if you lose a piece of your bot the problem is you don't always have the room or the volume for this so you have TX designs you have designs that just are lower volume because they use all their CPU up on other components so how can we help try and compress some of this down into um, a format that allows you to transfer what you've learned in these videos over to more compressed, compact designs, TX, etc., etc.? Well, um, something that some people will call advanced triforcing, but what that really just means is you're using all these different methods in a way that shows that you're conscious of all the different ways that damage flows within your bot. So this is an early design that I came up with and it's a setup that's meant to go into, this was during the damage boost era. Um, I wouldn't do this now, but this was my first attempt at combining split protection, single point damage sinks, and uh, dual mounting into one chunk that's very low volume so that I can then surround it with blocks that are meant to take damage and um, take damage before it reaches functional components. So what this is, is there's three damage sinks. Uh, there's this 3x3 three three strut, and then I've got a 3x5 strut here in the middle, and I've got another 3x3 three three down here at the bottom. And together, they prevent damage, or damage flowing from, from hover to hover has to go through one of these damage sinks before it reaches the other hover, and it also has to flow to the outside of the bot. And likewise, damage coming in from the outside of the bot has to flow to one of these damage sinks before it flows to any hovers. So, I'll illustrate. So this hover here dumps to, I believe, the bottom. And you'll notice that this lights up before any other hovers, front or back. And it's the same for all of these. So this one dumps to the bottom 3x3. Three three. This one dumps to the top 3x3. Three this one dumps to, I believe, the middle 3x5, and you can you can see that middle 3x5 light up in there before any other hovers. Um, oh, the exceptions are, so this here is a really early input damage sink, it's only two steps, and it's to prevent, so damage coming in past these hovers, this is meant for a front heavy design, so you'll see I've got a, a pretty high concentration of hovers here on the front, because the front would be like, uh, out here, and this would be the very back. So these front hovers, the problem is damage flows past them, and then it gets a block past the mounting block, and if they stay on any longer than that, they have a tendency to cause you to flip. So you have your, there more uh, th uh, lift here in the front if there's no material to hold it up or to keep it down, and then it tips up and you end up nosing up, and then you flip. So this is meant to break this off early. And this will, we'll get back to this because this has a few issues with it. Um, but like I said, so each one of these dumps to a damage sink. And it's the same thing for the input, which is the orange. So this design is not meant to be a standalone thing. It's meant to be attached by the orange blocks to the outside shell of the bot. And that's so that damage can be shared with the outside of the bot as well, right? So the outside of your bot is acting as a damage sink um, between every set of hovers. So the inputs as well are also flowing into struts before any other part of the bot. Right, input there, input there. Pretty obvious. Um, 
I don't think there's actually a sink on this side. Yeah, this technically is not a sink, uh, but it's connecting directly to our split protection. So anyway, a few glaring issues with this. I talked about this in the other video. Uh, why not chain dual mounts together or have large high volume dual mount lines? It's just so that you don't lose multiple mounts at once. And that's what's happening here, right? I'm losing two dual mounts if this orange piece gets shot off. Uh, even more, because I'm losing the two from uh, this hover as, as well. I'm, in fact, I'll probably lose both of these, but I've got a third set running to the back. Not ideal. Um, but this was one of my early attempts. And like I said, it was during the damage boost era, so I had to stay within, you know, 1600-ish CPU. So, so split protection, and then the way that this works is, ideally, this zone would be destroyed early, and once this is destroyed, it isolates... Um, this line from the other lines, and since it's one block away from a strut, um, it's going to sink into the strut before it reaches my split protection, which connects to this hover set and runs to the back. And then this also is dual mounted through that way, basically. So, not great attaching multiple lines together. So what's a more uh, clear-cut example of this, more modern example of this? Well, I'll show you. So here, we have a more acceptable use of what I've been talking about, where we have a high health component with multiple attachment points that you still want to preserve. So this is an important thing. You don't want to lose your guns early. You also don't want to lose your movement parts early. So here we have a chained dual mount that basically is mounting two different components. Um, and what's happening here is our hover is actually acting as a single point damage sink. So you could have a, just pretend for a minute this is a dual mount, or a single string of blocks attached at either end to our body, here and here, and then we have a hover, so I don't know, here and, you know, here, I don't know, right? And so damage coming in here technically has to flow into this hover before it can just destroy this block and move on to this block. So this is acting as a single point damage sink protecting our other hover. Why not do this all the time? Why not have a, a dual mount with, you know, two components on it? And Well, the problem is you lose one of these ends, you're basically losing half your connection points for both of these functional components. You lose both ends, you're going to lose this whole chain. Furthermore, um, if this chain gets hit in the middle since it's so long, you're going to lose both of these functional components at once if it's struck in the middle. There's no damage sink in between these two. So ideally you don't want to do that for uh, single point uh, items if you can help it. Now, this is a multi-attachment point part, this Mega SMG. So damage coming up this leg of the dual mount for this hover will sink into the hover before it can go onto this block here, and it will technically preserve. So if I hit it with uh, a paint gun, you'll see Ideally, this will this has a fair amount of health on its own, so it'll stop here. Maybe it goes one block further, but it preserves this front mount, which also goes to the back, to this strut here at the back. So it's another attachment point. And it's the same thing for these sides here. So damage flowing up the side here will have to destroy the hover before it ever reaches this mount of the Mega SMG. And then it's also attached through this connection here. Now, this also works the other way. So if your gun gets shot off, so say this gun gets dropped to very low health, and then it gets shot off by something that does a lot of damage, like a mega rail. Well, you have some things here to help out spreading out damage before it reaches the hovers. So first of all, damage is going to jump back over this rod to this strut before it ever reaches any of these hovers, and that will spread out to the attachment points here, which you could even have shields here to soak up extra damage, but ideally you want shields to be also be out in front to absorb damage. And then we also have, uh, this is gambling here, um, so when I say gambling I mean that whenever you split damage between two components on a step, um, it's dividing up all the remaining damage between those parts. So if I hit my gun with damage, on this step of damage where it's reaching these electroplates, it's also reaching the mounting block for the hovers. And if this gets destroyed, the hover will get destroyed. But it splits up any remaining damage amongst all the parts on that step. So it's getting split up between all the attachment points on the other end of this strut, and it's getting split up between, you know, basically all of these dark blue blocks. So I, if we wanted to make it foolproof, we would add another step of damage in between our hovers and the legs of our Mega SMG. But this is just the sort of thing that you have to do when you're playing the numbers game with dual mounts. So if I had 11 hovers, and I want, uh, aside from the actual mounting block itself, I want 
you know, uh, three long lines for every hover, and you're going to have two lines, two dual mount lines for every hover, we're now talking about 33, well, actually, yeah, 66 blocks of volume. That's a huge volume. You, your bot doesn't necessarily always have that kind of volume. And all the dual mount's meant to do is it's meant to just, you know, attach components to different places and try and preserve them a little bit better. So this is a way that you can kind of compress uh, dual mounts and split protection and whatever else into a single conglomerated thing. So this is another example with some legs. We've done an awful lot of hovers, so I figured I'd do an example with legs. So in this case, so you could, if you wanted to attach your legs together with split protection, this is split protection, right? If you wrap this rod, um, your legs will be connected to together, and if the material around this leg gets removed, the leg will be held up by the other leg. Problem is, say this leg gets dropped to really low health, and then it gets shot by a mega rail or something. Well, damage is going to jump in two steps, so, you know, uh, one, two, it's going to jump over to that leg. Um, you don't want that, because you might not have enough health around this leg to soak up the damage before it starts dumping into your other leg, and if you lose your other leg, you're not going to be able to move. So, I mean, ideally you'd have backup movement parts, but let's try and prevent these two from being destroyed as early by adding another step. So now we have four steps from leg to leg, and that allows us to maybe use this electroplate we have out in front. So before damage can reach our other leg, it's going to have to sink into this electroplate, right? So, right, one, two, three, into the electroplate. And I can also use things like struts to help spread that out a little bit better. And you can see how long it takes for the damage to reach the other leg. And also these pieces of split protection are a little more separated. So it's nice. Now what about the shield? Say the shield gets dropped to really low health, and you're worried about it transferring damage to the legs. Well, one of the advantages of mega plates is they're dumping to all these other locations that they're attached to. So you could have struts sinking damage, right? So now, before damage reaches my legs, it's going to dump to all those other pl places that that shield's attached to. And you could have uh, other sinks to help protect the damage from flowing into the legs. So you have a setup that benefits from the shield being here as it helps separate the legs. And you have it set up so that if the shield takes damage, it dumps into the body instead of to the legs. And you get the benefits of split protection. So this is just starting to kind of scratch the surface of what you can do to help compress your designs and make them a little bit more space efficient. So this is an example from Cataphrat, and this is his wheelbase, and it's kind of like a triple mount, um, but in this case he's just integrated his split protection into his dual mount. So in this case he's got his green line coming in from the front of the bot, and then he has a red line, which is his second dual mount going to the body. It attaches basically right above the wheel, and then you have your blue, which attaches to the red here. Uh, running back to the other wheels, which have kind of a similar setup to how he set this one up. So damage coming in from this green line is going to have to go to yellow before it can go to red, and on the next step it's going to be splitting its damage between basically this wheel and the red block here, right? So the it, it, this is kind of playing the numbers game where your damage, once it overflows from this block, is going to flow into the wheel and this uh, heavy cube, and ideally it's a 50-50 chance if the this block gets consumed or the wheel gets consumed first, um, but in this case this has a this wheel has a large amount of health, and so there is a chance that it uses up the health of the wheel and it leaves this red connection, which then allows the body to still be held up by the split protection, because the wheel's gating the input side. So kind of interesting. Um, and then, as another example, we're going to go to one of my bots where I had huge issues with volume. So where would this be appropriate to use in a modern design? So here I have my flying hover. And there's actually, I've used this in quite a few places because these outside shields are meant to soak most of the damage. The shields are the majority of my body, but I still want to dual mounts. So I run into the issue of this is all the volume I have to play with for 10 hovers and 2 guns, plus these bits in the back. We'll go over this design later, but let's just look at a couple parts of it. So um, the actual attachment points for my mega rail are here, and you'll notice that these inputs here to the side are actually going through one of my hovers. This is pretty much exactly what you saw with that mega SMG example, where I have multiple attachment points for my rail, and so 
damage flowing through here is gated through the hover going to the outside, right? So com damage coming in to my mega rail is going to get have to soak into this hover before it gets to my mega rail, and then damage coming out of my mega rail is going to get soaked through these rods to other parts of my body. In this case, the bottom back away from my module. You can't see it, but it's it's coming up through there, and to the front where it's going to dump to the shields. And I've done that in multiple po points on this bot because I was running out of room.